you know, I remember watching him during that season. Obviously, he didn't play a lot, uh, but he strung together a few nice drives. He has skills. He had skills. You know, it wasn't like he came in and like pulled a Christian Hackenberg and never even got on the field. Total bust. He showed some potential. So this, I understand we probably spend too much time talking about him. We, there's too much attention given, you know, the record, but there's something there. And I know you fill in on the Dan Levitard show all the time. And, and Dan always talks about the, the absence of interesting personality wise at the quarterback. And I think that was part of for us, what was so appealing is we had this guy that appeared to match stellar play with a dynamic personality in a way that we don't often get there. And so a lot of the intrigue born from that. Well, Mike, you've talked to before about how system matters so much and you can have a great quarterback that just doesn't fit into the NFL system, wherever he's playing that doesn't mean that he's not a capable player. It just means he wasn't right for the NFL, wasn't right for that particular that particular system. It doesn't mean that Johnny Manziel can't turn around and be, for example, a very successful CFL quarterback. And that's what we're waiting to find out this week. Well, and, and again, Mike Sherman going to join us in just a minute. Uh, we'll, we'll find out sort of where this – you played for like two seconds in the CFL, right? Yeah, and so there's a lot of differences rule-wise that you certainly have to account for now – as much as we haven't seen Johnny on the field, didn't get to see him on the field in Hamilton, he was still up there during training camp, was on, you know, riding the bench there for the first portion of the season. And so he's gotten used to the rules, you know, extra man on the field for both sides, fly motions on offense, running yeah. up to the line of scrimmage, having that extra defender on defense, all those things you have to account for. But now in a short week, he's getting ready to say, okay, I joined a new team. How do we game plan and get this guy ready for game action to hopefully get on the field now? It's Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio. ESPN News. Jason Fitz, Mike Golick Jr., and Mina Kimes hosting. And we are now going to be joined by former Texas A&M head coach, now head coach of the Montreal Alouettes. Mike Sherman joins us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. Get triple action protection for optimal engine performance with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Coach, thanks for some time this morning. What did you guys see in Manziel that made you want to trade for him right now? Well, it's, um, it's as much as what we were seeing uh, here in Montreal where we had uh, four quarterback injuries as well. Uh, you know, a depletion in our offensive line. So we had to get that built up. Uh, part of the trade, we got two offensive linemen as well as Johnny, and uh, and we just needed something to, to 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 light a fire under our guys and give us an opportunity to to move the ball. We have not had that success as of late. A lot of contributing factors, but uh, the quarterback position was definitely one of them, and Johnny enhances his position. Uh, Mike Golick Jr. just spoke a little bit to some of the differences between the NFL and the CFL and the college game. Can you speak to, you know, how you prepare a quarterback who's also fairly new to the league, as you are as a coach, to adjusting to the game up there? It's a totally different game. There's no question about it. I've never said uh, get the punt team ready so many times (laughs) (laughs) during the course of the game because, you know, if you don't get a first down and two downs, you're punting. And so it's a totally different game. The, The special teams play up in Canada is just unbelievable and highly intense and players love to play on special teams, which is not always the case in the States. But, uh, um, you know, the, the waggles on the motion uh, certainly contribute to a, a new addition to, that neither myself nor John have had experience with down in the States. Uh, the two downs, uh, you know, to get a first down um, certainly is a challenge. We In the States, you kind of set things up with your three downs, and hopefully you get a first down and you keep on going. Here you have have two downs. So if you run on first down, you don't get much. It's second and ten. You're more than likely going to be throwing it on second down. So um, there are a lot of different nuances, and and that doesn't even include the administrative part of the game where you have have seven Canadians that have to play in the game. If a Canadian gets hurt, you have to replace them with a Canadian. So uh, there's a lot of administrative things that occur during the game that – uh, make the game a very popular state uh, nationwide game up here in Canada. Talking to former Texas A&M head coach and now Montreal Alouettes, Montreal Alouettes head coach Mike Sherman. And you guys play tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern. We're airing it on ESPN+. Plus. Is the expectation for Manziel to start tomorrow? Well, he just got here uh, on, on Monday and uh, had his physical, so he's really only had – uh, Monday, Tuesday, yesterday, Wednesday. He's only really had one full practice, so I'm not going to put him in a position where he's not going to have success. Uh, so we'll see how we'll play it by ear and uh, and, and see how that goes. Uh, but uh, you know, our offense, even though it's Canada, you know, our, our vocabulary, our language, uh, offensively, is different than where he's been, and uh, you know, so knowing where the receivers are going to be and. Uh, 
and how the protection is going to protect them is important. So um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how today goes, and then we'll make a decision after today's practice whether he's going to play in the game or not. But uh, uh, he's going to be out there sooner rather than later, that's for sure. Coach, you talk so much about the differences in the Canadian football uh, approach. What about that plays specifically to the strengths of Johnny in your mind? Well, the field, uh, the dimensions of the field obviously create a wider space to cover people and also that affects in the running game. And so John's ability, much like a Doug Flutie when he was up here, uh, can create space and time uh, with his feet. And uh, uh, you can't cover people forever up in this league because the field is so so long and has extra width. So uh, we're 13 13 yards wider and um, you know the end zones are deeper and so um, you have opportunities to be able to uh, buy yourself some time and create plays with your feet uh, if a play breaks down or or if we elect to go with some type of movement type pass so uh, I, do, I do think it does play to a skill set. Coach we only got about a minute here but I just wanted to ask you obviously recruited Johnny and had him for a year when he redshirted at Texas A&M what do you notice is a difference now between the man you inherited and the one you recruited? Um, that's a great question. You know, I don't see a whole lot of difference between him back then and him right now. He's very respectful. Um, he's very articulate. He can voice his, um, you know, his opinions quite readily when asked to, uh, uh he's probably been humbled a little bit, uh, based on his experiences. Um, uh, uh, but then before, when I had him, it was before he won the Heisman Trophy. So he's kind of done gone full circle with me, and uh, he's kind of the guy I was that I was recruiting, uh, a guy just trying to make it, um, a guy trying to prove that he was he can be one of the best. And so he tried to do that in high school where he was part of the best high school football player I've ever seen, uh, and now he's trying to do it again. And uh, all the stuff in the middle really doesn't matter.